I'm Stanislaus County Sheriff Jeff Dirksy. I'm here to talk to you about an officer-involved shooting that occurred on Highway 33 outside the city of Newman on Friday, September 22, 2023. The shooting incident occurred following a crime spree that began 16 hours earlier. The suspect in this case is 43-year-old Jason Dingler, who has an extensive criminal history. In this video, we will break down the events that led up to this officer-involved shooting. This video will contain footage of Dingler committing violent crimes as well as shooting at deputies. Warning, this video may contain graphic material and may not be suitable for all audience. What you are seeing on your screen is a map of the west side of Stanislaus County. At 1.09 a.m. on September 22, 2023, Dingler breaks into a home in the 3000 block of West Keys Road. During this burglary, Dingler steals a firearm which will be used during the course of this incident. Later that day, at 5.26 p.m., Dingler goes to a residence in the 5,000 block of Muncie Road where he uses that firearm to carjack a Ford pickup truck. Dingler then drives the stolen pickup to the one-stop market in the town of Grayson where at 5.37 p.m. he is seen armed and stealing a beer from the store. At 5.43 p.m., a California Highway Patrol officer locates the truck at the intersection of Highway 33 and Grayson Road. Sheriff's deputies and the sheriff's helicopter immediately respond to the area as the stolen truck is driving southbound on Highway 33. With a helicopter overhead, a sheriff's deputy initiates a traffic stop on Highway 33 near 2nd Street in Patterson. Dingler leads deputies on an 11-mile pursuit, which ends when Dingler crashes the truck. This is where the officer-involved shooting ultimately occurs. We will start this video at the first incident, which was the burglary that occurred on West Keys Road. Dingler is first seen shortly after midnight on home surveillance camera from the porch of the residence. The residents of this home were out of town. Dingler is seen ringing the doorbell several times and loitering around the area before forcing his way into the home at 1.09 a.m. While inside the home, Dingler located a firearm and several magazines of ammunition. He also steals a change of clothes while inside the residence. It is unknown how long Dingler was inside the residence or what time he left. The next sighting of Dingler is not until 5.26 p.m. on Muncie Road, where surveillance video captures him stealing a vehicle from a resident while holding him at gunpoint. During this incident, Dingler claims to be active duty military. Through our investigation, it was determined that Dingler has no previous military service. Warning, what you are about to see may be disturbing to some viewers. Get over here. Chances will. Can you get a picture? They're all back. I guess we'll get them. Can I get my shoes? Right now. Go ahead. You're good, civilian. Call the cops. What do you mean? Call the cops and you're dead. I'm active military. Coast Battalion, Second Corporal, United States Army. I'm out. This is the team right now, son. Right now. Don't, 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 you're fine, man. You're fine. You're fine. Dingler drives the stolen truck to the one-stop market in Grayson, where he is seen on surveillance both inside and outside of the store. While there, he walks into the market with a gun visibly exposed and a holster on his right hip. Dingler grabs beer and returns to his truck. Here is that surveillance video. As Dingler approaches the beer case, you can see him with his hand on the butt of the gun. This is a freeze frame showing the firearm on his hip. As Dingler exits the beer aisle, he places his hand on the firearm as several juveniles approach. As Dingler exits the store, the clerk triggers the alarm.
Approximately five minutes later, at 5.43 p.m., a California Highway Patrol officer locates the truck at the intersection of Highway 33 and Grayson Road. Deputies in the Sheriff's helicopter are already en route to that location. Deputies will initiate a pursuit at Highway 33 and 2nd Street. The pursuit ends when Dingler sideswipes another motorist, loses control, and crashes into an orchard. We will start the footage at the intersection of Highway 33 and Las Palmas Avenue in Patterson. Number two lane, come up to the red light at Las Palmas now. Okay, uh, 1033, we'll light it up. Uh, our K-9 unit said he's gonna light it up. JLV number four in pursuit. And uh, CHP units on channel two. I copy that you guys are gonna be backing off yeah, for now. Uh, Holly. We're not gonna make any updates. We'll just be uh, working with our guys. Um, if needed, we'll contact you. 4850 copy, spikes are set up, 33 enter. to the uh, major. I see the uh, Newman guy. He's coming to the stop sign now. Oh, looks like he just TC'd. Uh, and off to the uh, west orchard here. Dingler exits the stolen truck and begins running southbound into the orchard. As he is running, he fires multiple shots at responding deputies. The following clip is combined footage from Air 101 and body camera of Deputy Wilson. <laughs> Shots fired! Hey, he's shooting. I got you. This is the Air 101 footage, slowed down, that shows the suspect firing the gun towards deputies as he flees the scene. After the initial barrage of gunfire, Dingler fires additional solo shots at 6 p.m. and at 6.01 p.m., which are captured on Deputy Krebs' body camera. Tell him the last yeah, shot was on the last one. As Air 101 is following Dingler's movements, he raises his firearm and points it towards the helicopter. And then now eastbound in between the rows towards you guys. Something in his right hand. He is uh, pointing whatever's in his hands at us. I don't know if he's trying to shoot at us or not. At 6.13 p.m., Sergeant Rodriguez makes announcements to Dingler to surrender. Within seconds of making the announcements, Dingler fires four shots at deputies, striking a patrol vehicle deputies were using for cover. The following footage will show the announcements from Deputy Wilson's body camera, followed by Air 101 footage in which you can see the muzzle flash from Dingler's gun. And he's prone out, uh, facing directly towards you guys. And now he's shooting around at you guys. As you can see in this photo, the patrol Tahoe was struck four times with one bullet piercing the radiator. Approximately 10 minutes after firing four shots at deputies, Dingler begins to make his way back towards where the deputies are located. As Dingler approaches deputies, they take up positions of cover and the armored vehicle pulls forward. Deputy Krebs is in a prone position aiming underneath one of the patrol vehicles. Deputy Borba is in the turret on top of the armored vehicle. When they first see Dingler, the firearm is not pointed towards the deputies. Dingler raises his firearm and Deputy Krebs and Borba fire almost simultaneously. The following footage is from Deputy Johnson's body camera. Linko's coming up. He's approaching. He's walking. He's approaching. He's walking directly towards us. Come on, guys. One by. He's walking towards us. He's in the way. He's coming to go. 
Right there, stop! Stop. Gun behind his back. Morgan's got it. Shoot her down. One down. Alright, he's up, walking uh, eastbound towards you guys, ducking between the trees, trying to get a better look. Walking uh, eastbound towards 33. He's just one row south. Okay, he's laying down, gun is to his right side. As you'll see in footage from Air 101, the firearm is still within arm's reach of Dingler as he is on the ground. Deputies continue to make announcements to get Dingler away from the firearm so they can safely approach and render aid. Dingler is initially uncooperative and does not follow deputies' commands. Now, four trees west, he's uh, at that first row just south of the break, laying down. The gun is to the right side of his shoulder there. Roll at 12. Give me an ounce in. Give me an ounce in. Put your hands up. I can see you moving your head. Put your hands up. You are under arrest. Control 6 at 12. Subject is still moving. Not following commands. Subject is still moving. Not following commands. Yeah, speak Spanish. If you guys want to try to use Spanish now, since he's not really uh, doing what we're telling him, if you guys want to try that. Did you want to put my water? Wonderful, go follow Farima. Put both your hands up in the air. Hands in the air. Just an update overall for everybody. Listen up. Tactical is in route. Everybody hold your position. We got some extra armor moving forward. After a short time, Dangler moved away from the firearm, allowing deputies to approach him from the armored vehicle to render aid. The following footage is from Air 101 and Deputy Corral's body camera. Yeah, one one. He's finally uh, made it to the break in the orchard there, just to the north of that first row. Leg down. Hey, for me, T-141 is in the fire staging. Got it. Okay, Tech team's moving up to make contact now. Tech team, we're about to make contact. I got a uh, GSW to the right arm, left arm. Sorry, you shot. Huh? I'm a stomach. Your stomach? I am a stomach. Get the shirt off. Oh my God, help me, please help me. Oh, I hurt so bad my stomach. Connect the surface lower half, please. Ow, fuck, ow. We're going to render aid as soon as possible, sir. Deputies applied a tourniquet and a chest seal and evacuated Dingler to a waiting ambulance, which transported him to a local hospital for treatment. At the time of the release of this video, Dingler was in critical but stable condition. Deputies recovered the stolen handgun, which you can see on your screen. Dingler was arrested on multiple violent felonies, which included five counts of attempted homicide of a peace officer, carjacking, kidnapping, robbery, and assault with a firearm. Dingler has an extensive criminal history, which includes convictions of robbery, rape, and other violent crimes. The driver of the vehicle that Dingler struck sustained moderate injuries. Fortunately, no deputies or any members of the public were struck by gunfire. As with all officer-involved shooting incidents, multiple investigations are currently taking place. The Sheriff's Office is conducting the criminal investigation as well as an administrative investigation into policy matters. The District Attorney's Office is conducting an investigation into the shooting as well.